Hey, how's it going? As I promised this week, I built the open source screener to keep track of the real time prices, candles, indicators, or whatever you want from the market and send notifications through Telegram. Now let's see how we can configure the script. The first thing is exchange. We are going to use Binance Perpetual. Then we have a list of trading pairs. I tried up to 120 trading pairs without issues, but I would recommend you to try it by yourself. Remember that this task is going to subscribe via WebSocket to the K-Line updates, collect the arrest, the missing candles that are needed, and then use the WebSockets to continue update the last candle. So depending on how many candles do you want, this might be a little bit expensive, so I recommend you to try with different trading pairs in the machine that you're going to deploy this service. Then we have a list of intervals. This is in case that you would like to mix up, I don't know, one hour, three minutes and get information from all of them. Then the max records is how many candles we are going to keep. This means that each candlestick will have 500 candles. And then we have the volatility interval. In this case, we are going to use Bollinger. So this will be also the length of Bollinger. But well, we're going to collect, we're going to use the last 200 to compute the indicator. And then which are the columns that we would like to show in the report. Uh, then we have this variable that will let us sort the values of the data frame by these two columns. Now we're going to see which are those columns and how they are calculated. And this top end is how many results we would like to show. For example, if you are going to have 100 trading pairs and you would like to get, I don't know, the top three uh, with the best indicators sorted by some reason or filtered by some reason, uh, this might be useful to limit the output that you are going to see. And then this report interval will be used to send us the notifications through Telegram in an automated way. This means that every six hours we're going to receive a message with a current report. One interesting challenge will be instead of doing a periodic report, send a notification if something happens. That will be really easy and you have to do it actually here in the ONTIC. You see that here we are analyzing the condition of if it's time to send a new message. Here, instead of validating if we have to send a new message, you will get the you will need to get the information, the data from the candles, compute the indicators, and based on certain conditions, send the message or not. So the script is pretty straightforward. As you can see here in the init, we are doing the initialization of all the candlesticks. Uh, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, and then here in the on tick, we are checking if the candles are ready. If not, we are reporting. We are we cannot start since we are missing this quantity of candles. And then the last part here is a part of the periodic report that if all the candles are ready, we are going to evaluate if it's time to send the message with the report. And then with this method that is notified HBOT app, we are going to send the message through the terminal of Hummingbot. And if you have Telegram enabled, this method also sends the message to Telegram. So well, the most important method that you probably would like to change is this one that is get market analysis. Here, what we are doing is we are looping through all over the candles. We have a dictionary where each key represents the trading pair and the interval that we are using. And the value is the candlestick itself. Actually, not the candlesticks, is a candle object of Hummingbot. And with candles.df, as you can see here, we can access to the data frame of the candles. Um, we are getting the interval and adding the value of the trading pair because by default, the candles does not have the trading pair as a column. It only has open, low, high, close, volume, and other things. Uh, so here we are adding that for reporting purposes. We are also adding the interval. In case that we have multiple intervals, this will help us uh, to see which is the, the interval for the final report. Then here we are computing the volatility that in this case, in this example, we are not using it, but you can change the values that you would like to show in order to show the volatility if you want. 
the measure of the volatility is in price. So it's not easy to compare volatilities in price of Bitcoin and different assets. So probably it's a good idea to divide the volatility by the close price. So we are going to have like an a normalized volatility. This is what we are doing here. And the last thing that we are doing here is computing the mean of the last X values of uh, volatility. This is normalization and smoothing of the indicators that we are computing. Now we are adding the Bollinger Bands to the data frame. I would recommend you to check the Pandas TA documentation to see how you can add more indicators. In this case, we are adding the Bollinger Bands. This append equal true means that we are going to append the new columns to the data frame. That is this DF that we are using. And this BBB and BBP are some of the columns that are added. BBB is the width in percentage of the Bollinger Band. We're going to see that in a while, so don't worry. And BBP is the percentage of the Bollinger Band. Seems like it's the same, but it's not the same. One is the width in percentage, and the other one is where is the close price regarding to the Bollinger Band. For example, if the BBP is equal to one, means that the close price is in the upper bound. And if VVP is equal to zero, means that the price is in the lower bound. So it's like a reference of the close price regarding to the Bollinger Band. Then lastly, we are adding that the last row to this market metrics uh, dictionary that we initialize it here. And at the end, we are creating a data frame and transposing it to return that. And that will be used in the status and in the notifications that we are sending. Let's see the indicators that we are using, but in the graph. The first thing is to add indicators. I already added them. So you can go here and add Bollinger and you have Bollinger Bands and Bollinger Bands percentage and width, but we can see the width from here too. So don't worry. Um, this is the percentage. We're going to see how it works in a while, but let me first explain you how the width works is the value that I, we mentioned that is called BBB. So as you can see here, the BBB will be this value. From this up to this, I cannot see very well for the, because it's very big, but let's see here now, uh, like that. So this is the width, is, which is the percentage of the width of the Bollinger Band. In this case, it's 9.31%. Um, I would like to trade on markets that this width is very big because remember that the value that we have here, that is this orange line that we have here, is a mean of 200 periods. So in my case, that I like to run mean reversion strategies, as bigger the width means that the opportunity of reversal might be bigger because from the upper bound or the lower bound, the distance up to the mean is greater. So that's why I prefer to trade on markets that has a bigger width of the Bollinger Band. Then here we have the percentage of the Bollinger Band. And this is why you probably would like to combine these two indicators because this measures, which is a current close price regarding to the band. As you can see here, the value is 0.0. .0 six, something like that. And this means that we are really close to the lower bound. If we check other scenarios, for example, here that the price moves a lot from the Bollinger Band, and then you can see that comes back, see that the price here moves away from the Bollinger Band. So here is when it crosses the one, and then it is slowly coming back. And here we can see that too. So in my case, what I would like to have in this screener are the markets that are the most deviated from the Bollinger Band. And then probably I will pick those markets and start running mean reversion strategies like Demon B3 to capture the reversals. So well, that's all about how to understand the indicators that we are using. Now let's see how we can run the bot. As you can see, I have already Telegram connected. I would recommend you to follow the documentation in order to create a new bot with Botfather and then connect it to Hummingbot. Um, I have here a terminal, so I'm going to open up the bot. 
on run start script screener volatility we're going to start collecting all the candles this is subscribed via WebSocket. Binance to send the first message via WebSocket or waits until you have a trade. So if you are trading on iLiquid markets that probably they don't have trades, you are going to have to wait a little bit until the bot starts. Well, it already started. So as you can see, I'm receiving the first report that is trading paired, the width percentage, and which is the percentage of the close price regarding to the band. As you can see here, we have the top 10 results as we asked for, and we should receive the same message in Telegram. So as you can see here, 1927, we received the same message uh, here. So well, this means that it works because remember that the report is going to be sent every six hours. The first time is sent by default because the counter starts in zero. So, well, if we want to check the status at some point before, we can just press here this button and it's going to send us again this information. We can stop the bot if we don't, if we want to put the bot to stop or change something. And if we want, we can start the bot again. As you can see here, we have the stop from Telegram and it's started again through Telegram. So, I think that it's a good interface to control your bots uh, through Telegram. Uh, well, that is how it works. Let me know if you want to have a different indicator or if I can help you to understand anything else. Lastly, I would like to recommend you to take BotCamp, that is our online course to teach you how to code trading bots and do custom things with HammingBot. Thank you very much and I hope that you like it.